Hello, I'm Pastor Hank, and it's so good to be able to spend some time with you today. I just, uh, I just love the Lord, and I love to share His love. And uh, you know, the Bible says that He loved us so much that He sent His Son, Jesus, and that if any of us would believe in Him, we wouldn't have to perish, but we could have eternal life, everlasting life. And I love the next verse after that because it says he didn't send Jesus here to condemn us. He sent him here to save us. And you know, there's plenty of things in this life that condemn us. There's plenty of things in this life that discourage us and steal our hope. But you know, the fact that God loves you, the fact that you're valuable to God, the, you, you, you mean something to him, uh, that, that's enough to give us all hope. And uh, I, I hope I'm able to share something, or I want to share something today that, that brings some hope into your life, uh, because God's, God's so good. And he looks down at you, and he thinks you're so good. Uh, I'm going to share a little bit with you, but before I do, I, I, I want to just say a little quick prayer with you, because I, I don't know what you're going through. I, I don't know what you're facing, but I do know that God knows, and, and he cares about you, and uh, I'd just like to get him involved in your life a little bit, if you will. So just, just if you would, let me say a little quick prayer with you. Father, you know everyone that's watching this program. You know everything that they're going through. You know every detail of their life. You know what they're facing now, what they will face this week. And Lord, there's nothing greater than the truth that you, you care about them and you love them. And Lord, I just ask right now that you'd touch their heart and that you'd, you'd, you'd let me say something that would spark their hope and would, would, would help them to get through their things. I just ask, Father, that you'd just be big in their life and, and, and just let them feel your love. And we thank you for that and praise you for it in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. God does love you. And right now, I want to share part of a message with you. And I think it will be a blessing to you. So just relax. Whatever you're doing, just relax. And turn everything off for a few minutes. And just, just let God touch your heart. Let him bless you. And I'll be back in a few minutes to visit with you. All week long, the, the phrase has been in my heart, the reason why. You know, the reason why. Why did God do all that he did did why does he do all that he does why do we do what we do I, I just have had that uh, phrase in there the reason why and I, I want to read you first out of second uh, Peter 3 9 and it says the Lord's not slack concerning his promises as some count slackness but he's long-suffering towards us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Holy Spirit, use me today to flow your love. Use me today to speak words. Uh, and we just ask that you speak to all of our hearts and touch us. I, I just, uh, you know, I'll just say this. God is not willing for anybody to perish. He doesn't want anybody to miss heaven. He doesn't want anybody to go to hell. And he doesn't want anybody to have to live like it all the time they're here. We got a good God, and he loves us, and he has good things for us, and he's not willing that anybody perishes. He wants everybody, that, that word repentance, we've made a religious phrase out of that, that just means he wants all of us to turn from our old ways, to turn from the sin in our life, to turn, to repent. That just means to turn and go after God. That just means to change. That just means I don't want that anymore, God. I want you now. John 3, 16 and 17 said, For God so loves the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. And I love verse 17. And I'd just like to get about a million preachers in the same room and just read this verse to all of us about a million times. It said, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, 
but that the world through him might be saved. And I'll just say today that, hey, uh, we all have reason to be under condemnation. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If we all got what we deserved, we'd go to hell, but we don't get what we deserve. We get what Jesus gave us, and he died and, if we'll, and, and rose again, and if we will believe in him, we don't have to perish. And so all of you that feel condemned today, you just tell Jesus, just say, hey, forgive me, and then get out from under all that condemnation. I never figure out how we're going to how we're going to convince people God loves them by telling them everybody how bad they are all the time. I don't know about you, but you don't have to tell me how bad I am. I already know. Whew. But I'm trying to take all my bad and change it for all Jesus is good. Exchange it, and uh, and He's got plenty of good. He said, "Now, if you'll just accept it, Hank. If you'll just receive it, you can have my righteousness, and I'll take your filthy old rags." Woo, give him some praise. I just love him. Why did you do it, God? Why did you do it? Matthew 18, 11 says, The Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Luke 19, 10, uh, it says this. He says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Man, I love that. I love that. He not only saved me, but he seeks me out, man. He, he chased me down. He, I, I couldn't get away from him, you know. He, he just, every time I turned around before I was saved, every time I turned around, he was just right there. You know, the Bible says, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I, that, that, that's scary sometimes. I'm telling you what, you, you ever backslide or you ever get away from God, I'm telling you what, he'll run you down. He'll, he'll be on you like a bird dog on a quail, man. I'm telling you, he'll, he'll not let you go because he loves you. Whew, glory. I'm feeling better already. How about you? Paul said to the Philippian church in 2.5, he said, he said, let this mind be in you that was in Jesus. Let this mind be in you. What, what mind was in Jesus? Well, <laughs> he said to the disciples at the well, you remember the lady at the well came and, 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 and the disciples had gone in to get food and, 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 and she came and, and we know the story there, but, but after she left and, and Jesus, the, the disciples came back and after she left, the, the disciples tried to get Jesus to eat. And, and this is what he said in John 4, 34. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. He, and he told the Philippian church, he goes on to say there that, 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 that he, he humbled himself and came down here in the form of a person of human flesh and he became obedient to the cross, obedient to the end, to that death on that cross. Hmm. <clears throat> my food is, my, my, my drive my passion is to do the will of my Father. My passion is to finish my course. I, I, I want you to, to feel that heart if you can. I want you, I want you just to feel the heart of God if you can for a minute. Why, Father? Why did you do this? Because my heart, my passion was for you, Hank. It was for you, Jim. It was for you, Christy. It was for you, Leonard. My, my heart, my passion was to get you back because I love you so much. And I love Luke 15. It's got, to, it, it's, it's, it's got three parables in it and and then we've all heard them so many times and read them so many times. But, 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 the, but the concept of, of leaving the 99, not because he didn't care about them, but leaving the 99 and going to the one, going after the one lost sheep, going after the one that he hadn't found yet. The passion there. And then the joy. The joy when he finds that lost sheep. And he talks about the, the, the lost coin and he, and, he, and he talks about 
the, the value of this coin, how valuable this coin is, and that this lady does everything she can to find this valuable coin. And, and when she finds it, oh, the joy that floods. And, and, and he compares that to, to, to us in heaven. And, and he said that all of heaven rejoices when just one person One person comes to Him. Just one person returns to the Lord. I I want you to understand the emphasis and the, and the, and the, and the, the desire and the purpose. Then the last one, the Son shows the attitude of the Father whenever we do return. It's not a condemnation thing. It's not a, you know, well, I'm so sorry. And, I'm, I, I, you know, and the son tried to do all that, and the dad just, just bypassed all that. It says it ran, he ran to him and, and grabbed him and embraced him and kissed him. And the son's trying to tell him how bad he is. And I, you know, the dad already knew how bad he was. And, 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 and the, son, the dad's not a bit interested in what happened yesterday. The, the, the dad's happy because the son's home. He says, man, get him some clothes. Get him, replace him. Put the ring. Replace him to his position of authority. Man, put some shoes on his feet. Kill the fattest calf we got out there. We're going to party. If we could just get the concept of that, if we could just get God's heart, God, what, what's the reason why? Why did you do what you did? He invested his son. He came down here. He, 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 he came to seek us out, to save us, to make a way where we could be back with the Father. You see, everything about God was and is centered around Him showing His creation His goodness. It's not about straightening you up and and, and cracking the whip and, and making you obey all the rules. I'm telling you what, that will happen. You'll do that automatically when the Father starts shedding His love abroad in your heart. When perfect love starts coming in, man, you start trying to clean the house up. His his passion, uh, his his desire. I love Ephesians too, man. I just love the whole book of Ephesians. I've about got the pages that are about falling out of my Bible in Ephesians. It's about time for me to give this Bible to somebody, I guess. But man, I got so much stuff marked. I I hate to get rid of it. I have to get a new one every once in a while. But. I love it. He, he, he talks about how he, he found us, we, we, our, our condition, our deadness, our, our, our lostness, our, our in, in sin, uh, on our way to hell, no hope for us. And it says that, that he found us in that condition and, and, he, and he made us alive again. And verse 6 says he raised us up together and he seated us with Jesus Christ. Do you understand what that means? He... he he put us back, excuse me, he, he put us back in our position of authority. He restored us. He gave us the ring back. Boy, he said, now, raising you up to the level. Man, he's not trying to tear you down. He's trying to raise you up. He's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to help you. He's not not mad at you. He's so happy that all heaven's rejoicing because you're living for Him. In verse 7 it says that, 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 that so in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace through His kindness to us. You get that? He wants to show you His grace. His grace by, by being kind to you. I don't know about you. I've heard so many debates and so much junk. I'm ready for some kindness. How about you? I'm ready for some kindness. But all that you're hearing is a reflection in the natural of what's really taking place in the spiritual, by the way. Too many of us are all tore up inside and we're all frustrated inside and we're all, we're all grabbing and, and grabbing. Hey, it's not supposed to be that way. 
We've got the, the, the spirit of the, of the almighty God living on the inside of us. Man, he'll change your situation. He'll change your character. He'll change your dynamics if you let him. And I love verse 10. He tells us in verse 10, he says that, that this, this is what he said. He said that, now Hank, you, you know, you have to put yourself in these scriptures yourself. I can't do it for you. So, so, just, so just forgive me if I put myself in a position to receive all his goodness, okay? And if you want some of it, you can put yourself in that position too. But he said, Hank, I created you. You are my workmanship. Because you see, I have some good works that I prepared beforehand. And I want you to walk in them. I have some good things that I have prepared before you ever got saved, before you were ever born. I got some good things I prepared for beforehand, and I created you so you could walk in those good things that I've got. Hmm. You read the verse right before that, it says, it's not by works. If it was, we could boast. No, it's all by faith. Faith in what he did and our faith reaches out to his grace God what did you do all that you did now this is what I want you to see I want you to see I want you to see his heart and it, 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 it the only way you'll feel this is if the Holy Spirit helps you feel it but I want you to feel his heart and how his heart is broken for you and for me. I want you to I want you to feel the reason why. The reason why he did all this. The reason why he did all this is is so he could show me his love. He could show me uh, uh, how how great that love was so that he could show you how great that love for you is. See he 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 he's trying to uh, it's because of his great heart of love for you for me but also for that one who hadn't found him yet now I just got to thinking the reason why why do you do all this why did you do all this God because I don't want anybody to perish are, are, you, are, you, are you feeling and are you realizing that's God's heart? And, and, and so, so now he's pleading with Hank. He's saying, would you, would you let me put the same heart in you that I have? Would you, would you let me put a heart in you, Hank, that cares so much about that lost one that when you see them come to the Lord, tears come in your eyes and, and you get excited. And, and just like heaven, you, you have a jubilee on the inside because that one person has come to me. See, I, I just want us for a minute to think about the reason why. Why did you do it, God? I did it because I love you. And I love that one that we haven't found yet but why okay so then why do we do what we do I'm I, I you know I've been talking a lot about about running the race and pressing towards the mark and and not looking behind but but looking forward and pressing forward and and going after the high calling and you know what what, what is all that what's that purpose what is that and this is why I think that I just needed to take a few minutes and talk about the reason why. Because if you don't have the reason why, when the blessings come in your life, they'll overtake you and you'll be, you'll be dumbfounded. You'll be led astray. You'll be so busy looking at the blessings that you'll forget why you're blessed. And I felt the urgency to say this right now because the things that we've been saying for the last 
four months, six months, whatever the thing, has been the Holy Spirit preparing us. And some of us, I hope all of us, are at the, at the threshold of the promised land. We're stepping across the Jordan and we're at, the, about the, the, we're at the time when when the goodness of God and the blessing of God is starting to be poured out on us. And when He starts pouring it out on us, he can't take it back. He doesn't stop it. He starts pouring it out on us. And we need to already be ready to receive it. I wish I'd win the lottery. Yeah, but if you won the lottery and you weren't ready for it, it would destroy you. Oh, I wish somebody just give me $50,000. Yeah, but if you can't handle $50, $50,000 would destroy you. <coughs> And the blessing isn't what we're after. The purpose is what we're after. He told Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you. Why did he say, I'm going to bless you? So you'll be a blessing. Help me, Lord. <clears throat> See, what is the purpose? I'm running the race, but where am I running to? What is the high calling? What what is it? I mean, I mean, why why what what is the blessing? Am I am I am I just waiting? Because see, if you don't have the purpose, if you don't have the reason why, when all the blessing gets there, you just look at all that big pile of money and you don't know what to do. And it excites you for a few minutes and it excites you for a little while, but but after a little while there's still a deadness in there, an emptiness in there, because because you don't have purpose. See, if we, if we do everything we do because we do it and we think there's a heavenly report card and everything we do good, we get a star by our name. And, and then, then after we keep doing this good just to be doing good, you know, if we don't have a purpose in our life, it's just all, it's just all lifeless. It becomes religion. And, and we begin to have a form of godliness but no power. I think some of us ought to have a form of godliness. Don't get me wrong. I'm working on mine. How about you? Oh, but you know what I'm asking God for? I'm asking God for the power. God, if you ever raised anybody up from the dead, you can raise them up now. If you ever made anybody grow feet, you can make, make them grow feet now. If you, ever, if you ever healed anybody, you can heal them now. If you ever blessed anybody financially, you can bless us now. And God, I want my people to walk in that. I want your power. But if you, if you just have the power and you don't know the purpose, you just end up frustrated. You end up, well, I'm going to go hunt someplace else because I'm just not getting fed. Or I just don't seem to be getting anything out of the services anymore. Or, you know, and, and, and we start picking and we start faulting and we start doing. Can I just tell you something? Your problem isn't out here. Your problem is in here. Let me tell you something, God's high calling and God's purpose have never changed. His heart has never changed. And so, so I need to say, God, I want your purpose to be my purpose. I want your heart to be my heart. Are you with me? And I'm talking about the core of you. I'm talking about the driving motivation. I'm talking about the, the passion inside of you. It has to be. It has to be for those lost people. It has to be for those people that, that the enemies tore their life apart and that they need it put back together. It has to be for that. So let's just talk about why why, why do we do the things we do? Why, why do we have a church? I mean, listen, do we have a church just to try to fill it up? And, and, and believe it or not, it's starting to fill up. I hope you enjoyed that. I, I hope I said something that helped you. You know, that's my heart, and honestly, that's the heart of this broadcast of our church is that we, we want to help people. If you're not saved today, I want to I help you be saved. If, if you are saved and maybe you've drifted away and you're just not living like you want to live, I, I, I want you... 
I want you to have, renew that relationship with the Lord. I mean, I'm concerned about everything in your life, and, and God is too. And so really that's why we do the broadcast. It isn't just to be doing something. It's to spread the gospel, to reach the lost, to, to reach the people that are hurting, and, and to try to say something that will help them. And, and, and I just want to take a minute because I want to thank all of you that have supported this broadcast all through the years. And uh, many of you send a, a monthly support in. Uh, I, I'm just so grateful for that. It, it means so much. And the truth is, because you do that, it's the reason we're able to stay on the air. We, we don't have an abundance of money piled up somewhere. Uh, we just believe God as we, as we go through. And uh, many of you have done that, and many of you from time to time send offerings, and, and I appreciate that. And I, I don't ever spend much time talking about money. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not after your money. I'm, I'm here to try to help you. But, you know, the truth is we, we can't function without partners, without help. And I, I thank all of you that are partners. You know, last year we had to buy all new uh, digital equipment, and... Uh, uh, you know, we didn't come on and say, hey, we got this great need and we're going to go under if you if you don't help us. No, we, we just believe God to, to get us through daily and weekly, and, and he always does. Uh, but, you know, I, I also at this time, I, I, I don't ever remember doing this, but I want to give some of you maybe that, that don't support, uh, that aren't partners, uh, uh, an opportunity to be a partner with me. Uh, uh, partnership miss means you're you're helping this and it just means that everyone that gets saved or gets touched or gets helped by this broadcast that you have a part of that and because you're a partner but you know I, I want to ask you a question uh, does this do you enjoy this broadcast does it help you has God been able to use it to speak something into your heart and 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 to do something in your life uh, if it if it has, I, I'd like to just ask you to pray about it and consider being a partner with me. Uh, just sending in a monthly support. Uh, some send 25, some send a lot more, but, but whatever you could do would be a help. And what I'm going to do for a few weeks here is I've got a little series here. It's uh, a series I preached a while back on faith. There's four CDs in it. Uh, it's it's not a, a just a regular faith teaching. I don't think I, I just I just talked about faith. I just talked about the fact that uh, that how to use it and, and how to develop it and uh, it's just some just some plain talk about faith. Uh, and anyway, I'd like to send this to you if if you'd like to be a partner. Uh, you just uh, you just let us know and uh, just begin to send your monthly support in and and we'd be happy to send you one of these copies if you if you do that and, and for some reason you don't get your copy of these just let us know and we'll be sure you do it again i thank you for all that you do and and, and if you're not able to do anything just just keep praying for us because uh you know if anything gets done it's all because of god i want to give you an opportunity if you've never asked jesus into your heart to to do that uh maybe you've thought about it uh you know, I, there, I, I found out there's a lot of people that know about God, this, but they just don't know God. And, and I want you to know him. I want you to know Jesus as your personal Savior. So if you don't know that you're saved, I, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, I want to be saved. Jesus, you died for me. I want to live for you. So I ask you to come into my heart right now, Lord. I give you my life. I want to live it for you, but I need your help. So thank you for that right now. And I pray it in your precious name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I'd like to send you some information. Give me a call. I'd like to send you some things that help you get on your way with the Lord. Hey, if you're not living as close to God as you know you should, won't you? Won't you just start right now and do it? Won't you just start right now? Make your mind up. Hey, Father, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for you. Uh, hey, I've enjoyed spending this time with you. I just uh, want you to know I love you, and it's always a joy to, to be here with you. And, and as you leave, I, I want you to know more important than anything else, God loves you. See you next time.